Astronauts to the moon. <laughs>going on everyone it's jaronism back with another video for you today talking about where we live and who has been lying if you think you live on a ball well you do no, i'm just kidding you don't if you think there are planets above your head there isn't let me start with a quote from Tycho brahe know who he is well if not we should start there Tycho was known in his lifetime as an astronomer astrologer and alchemist and has been described more recently as the first competent mind in modern astronomy to feel ardently the passion for exact empirical facts. As an astronomer, Tycho worked to combine what he saw as the geometrical benefits of the Copernican system with the philosophical benefits of the Ptolemaic system into his own model of the universe, the Tychonic system. Furthermore, he was the last of the major naked-eye astronomers working without telescopes for all of his observations. Tycho, however, probably too smart for his own good. Many actually think he was murdered by <gasps> Johannes Kepler, who is subsequently the father and founder of physical astronomy. Huh? It will probably make more sense after this quote from Tycho Brahe. There really aren't any spheres in the heavens. Those which have been devised by the experts to save the appearances exist only in the imagination for the purpose of enabling the mind to conceive the motion which the heavenly bodies trace in their course and by the aid of geometry to determine the motion numerically through the use of arithmetic. Yes, you heard that right. There are no spheres in the heavens. The experts have devised them in the imagination so it was easier to understand their movements. Tycho was after Copernicus and did not ascribe any motion to the earth, well, because it doesn't move. Copernicus was just making stuff up with no proof. Consequently, the same amount of proof that we have today. Tycho also said that there was no stellar parallax, saying that any change would be operator error or equipment error, or another reason altogether. So what's that mean? Well, it means stars are not distant. And their distance involves the distance to the sun, and that's wrong too. So here was Tycho's error. He gave away a secret that was simply reverse engineered by his assistant, Johannes Kepler, right after Tycho died under strange circumstances. Some say possibly mercury poisoning, but in 2012, they exhumed his body, and scientists tested and found mercury, but said it wasn't enough to be lethal. But there was some mercury. Hmm, I wonder if science had an agenda. Did they know the half-life was 27 years? Even Wikipedia says that the first exposure levels are high, but quickly begin to decrease. Of course we know what happened. Scientists discovered that he did not die of mercury poisoning. They were able to come up with the facts that he didn't even have high levels of mercury in his body the last few weeks of his death, and his bones showed that he didn't have high levels of mercury in the last five to ten years of his life. As if they can measure that. Uh-huh. So, what was it that Tycho Brahe did wrong? Well, in writing to Christoph Rothman, a Copernican astronomer, Tycho used basic geometry to show that, assuming a small parallax that just escaped detection, the distance to the stars in the Copernican system would have to be 700 times greater than the distance from the Sun to Saturn. Moreover, the only way that the stars could be so distant and still appear the size as they do in the sky would be if even average stars were gigantic, at least as big as the orbit of the Earth, and of course vastly larger than the Sun. And Tycho said the more prominent stars would have to be even larger still, and what if the parallax was even smaller than anyone thought? So the stars were going to be, be more distant. Then they would have to all be even larger still. And what do we have today? That exact system. Not because it's true, but because that's what it needs to be to keep the sun in the middle. So what exactly is parallax? The easiest way to describe it would be to think about sitting in the passenger seat of a car and looking over at the speedometer. It would look different as far as miles per hour than the driver sees. That's technically parallax. Stellar parallax is created by the relative motion between the Earth and a star and can be seen in the Copernican model as arising from the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. 
and the star only appears to move relative to the more distant objects in the sky. So stellar parallax is most often measured using annual parallax. Uh, down lower we see here the first successful measurements of stellar parallax were made by Frederick Bessel in 1838 for the star 61 Singi using a heliometer. Stellar parallax remains the standard for calibrating other measurement methods. Accurate calculations of distance based on stellar parallax require a measurement of the distance from Earth to the Sun, now based on radar reflection off the surfaces of planets. Guys, it's all nonsense. The angles involved in these calculations are very small and thus difficult to measure. The nearest star to the Sun, and thus the star with the largest parallax, is Proxima Centauri, has a parallax of 0 0.7687 plus or minus three one thousandths of an arc second. This angle is approximately that subtended by an object 2 centimeters in diameter located 5.3 kilometers away. Let's put that into a little easier to understand numbers. Uh, 0 0.76 is 76 hundredths of a second of arc, which represents about 1 five thousandth of a degree. Okay, now look at this. We are talking about 2 centimeters over 5.3 kilometers or 3.3 miles. Think of somebody standing across from you three and a half miles or 5.3 kilometers and think of having to measure at two different points in time if something ac across from you 3.3 miles moved two centimeters or do you believe what Brahe said which was if there is any parallax showing it's from operator error or equipment malfunction there's no way you can measure that amount of change to be honest this parallax was probably forged since the very beginning in 1838 when they measured Sinji it came back at 31 hundredths of an arc second. That's 1 11,613th part of a degree. Impossible for the 1800s. Forging, of course, for science is nothing new. A New York Times article linked below from 1990 talks about scholar and Dr. William H. Donahue, who proved that Kepler had fabricated his data. In fact, Dr. Donahue showed that all the data that Kepler had came from the theory itself not from the actual movements or past records of stars and planets. So Kepler, the father of physical astronomy, forged data in order to make the Copernican system work. Then he probably killed Tycho Brahe, stole his work, reverse engineered the huge size and huge distances of the stars, and science has just gone along with it the entire time. So we are left with one piece of the puzzle. And that piece is, many might say, but they do measure stellar parallax. The stars do appear to move with regard to the background stars. And yes, there may be some stellar parallax. Astronomers have technically observed stars moving, and thousands of them. Well, here's the point. About half of those show parallax, true. But half of each of the movements is in the opposite direction. That's called positive-negative parallax. If we go around the sun, parallax would be in one direction. Positive-negative parallax is not parallax. If we were truly going around the sun, it would be in one direction. So what's this all mean? Well, it means our entire idea of the cosmos isn't just wrong, it's very wrong. Like, astronomically wrong. The movement we have seen in all stars since Bessel doesn't prove heliocentrism, it proves it absolutely false. Copernicus is to blame for his idea that was based on nothing but speculation Earth doesn't move. Look around. Now take a look at this star chart here in the planetarium software. You'll see I changed the location to California. I'm now moving the time, and you'll see how the stars in the north rotate around anti-clockwise, counterclockwise, as they should. Now you see me moving the day. In a second here, I will move the month. Now we're moving the month, and we see the stars moving the same direction. Now when we move the year, we should see the stellar parallax, correct? Here is your stellar parallax. That's right. It is just the jostling of the sky. Earth doesn't move. So, any scientists, any physicists out there going to do anything? Or is the scientific community just going to sit there and do nothing? Where is your honor, dirtbag? You are an absolute disgrace! Guilty of a cover-up, the likes of which has never been seen in human history. Everything, and I mean everything that we were taught about space, about the planets, about the orbits, is a hoax. It's a lie. I can't believe it. I just don't believe it. Hundreds of thousands of confirmed star movements refute 
and disprove stellar parallax. Therefore, the Copernican system is wrong, and not just kind of wrong, it's like way wrong. So, to all those of you who can't possibly imagine a deception so large, it's time to realize that this isn't a conspiracy anymore. You just need to do the research, and you'll see that we don't and can't live on a spinning ball in space. Period. Math is not reality. So Red's rhetoric and the thousands of you that want to laugh and call me a moron every day, better get your shots in now because things are about to change. You guys are really just making it harder for the truth to come out, by protecting these frauds and the liars that deceived all of us. And lastly, NASA, we're coming for you. For 60 years, you've been faking space. You are some scumbags. Oh, you in trouble. They about to send them folks to your front door. Oh, you in trouble. Watch, watch, watch out for them folks, you know they cut though. Like, Open your mind. There's truth inside. This has been Jaronism. Till next time. Peace. Oh, you in trouble. They about to send them folks to your front door. Oh, you in trouble.